Welcome to St. Mary's Church as we celebrate the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. The story of Zacchaeus that is in today's gospel is in a cherished account of conversion and repent repentance. Zacchaeus committed himself to change. He would become an example for every follower of Christ who would seek conversion of the heart. St. Mary's Church is sponsoring its annual Election Day Cabbage Roll Sale this Tuesday. Sales begin at 6 a.m. Let us pray for all the sick and homebound who are united with us in prayer at this Mass and for all those who died, especially those names written in our books of remembrance during the month of November. Responsorial sign is found on page 236, 236. As we gather today as God's family, let us first mark ourselves with the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we come together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins, asking God to fill us with His mercy, His love, and the grace and strength to be the people that He wants us to be. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord, Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. <coughs> Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faith will offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Before the Lord, the whole universe is as a grain from a balance, or a drop of do morning dew come down upon the earth. But you have mercy on all, because you can do all things, and you overlook people's sins that they may repent. For you love all things that are, and loathe nothing that you have made. For what you hated, you have not fashioned. But how could a thing remain unless you willed it, or be preserved had it not been called forth by you? But you spare all things because they are yours, O Lord and lover of souls, for your imperishable spirit is in all things. Therefore you rebuke offenders little by little, warn them and remind them of the sins they are committing, that they may abandon their wickedness and believe in you, O Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will extol you, O my God and King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. The Lord is faithful in all of his words and holy in all his might works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith, that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you, in you, in him. In accord with the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your mind suddenly or to be alarmed, either by a spirit or an oral statement, or by a letter of allegedly from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. Listen now to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today, salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have ourselves a, a relatively short Gospel reading today with just two characters. And even though it's, it's just a relatively short Gospel reading with only two characters, we can learn so much from those two characters, Jesus and Zacchaeus. The first thing that we can learn about Zacchaeus, about Zacchaeus is that, like that gospel reading, he was short. Just like me. Vertically challenged, I like to call it. And he was so short that, that he knew that he wouldn't be able to see over the crowds of people waiting to see Jesus. He wanted to see Jesus. And so what does he do? He does what any short guy like me would do when they're in the crowds waiting to see something, like at a parade. He begins to run. He begins to run to the edge of the crowd, right? He starts to dance at his tippy toes and jump up and down and poke his head through other people's heads. But still, he can't see Jesus. He can only see the backs of their heads, just like me right now. And they were odd-looking heads. I see some pretty handsome heads. Some of them are pretty odd. By the way, have you ever noticed that that people who leave church early have odd-shaped heads? (laughs) None of them are here today, by the way. (laughs) But Zacchaeus was ignored. Nobody would let him through. The short guy who wanted to see the Lord. He was ignored. You can almost hear him screaming, Let me see him! Let me see him! We can only imagine that Zacchaeus was a a humble man and also very determined. Because we can only imagine... That he was so determined to see the Lord that he began to run again. And when he stopped the second time, he found a sycamore tree. And he climbs the sycamore tree. (laughs) 
to get our Lord's attention. But for some reason, Jesus knew him anyway. He knew him by name. And he called him by name. How did he know his name? Well, he's Jesus. And Jesus chooses Zacchaeus by name. Zacchaeus, come down from that tree. And he invites himself over for dinner. Which is a very interesting move on the part of Jesus because keep in mind that Zacchaeus was a tax collector and he was a wealthy man. He became a wealthy man because he was a tax collector. How? Because after he would, he would give some of the taxes over to his bosses, the Romans, who were despised by the Jews because the Romans were oppressing the Jews, Zacchaeus would also take some money off the top. He stole money. And so, at the same time, not only was he a tax collector and a wealthy man, but he was also a sinner. He was a thief. And everybody knew about it. Everybody hated Zacchaeus. And so they're scratching their heads and they're wondering, why would this man Jesus who seems to be a prophet, why would someone like him go into a house like Zacchaeus' house? Why would he be associated with that guy? Doesn't he know who he is? That evil man? But Zacchaeus is open to Jesus' invitation to go into his house tonight to have dinner with him. And he doesn't care what other people think about. About what they think about him or what Jesus is going to do that night. And that's where we learn a lot about Jesus. Jesus knew Zacchaeus' sins, but he loved him anyway. He loved him anyway. Jesus loves the sinner but hates the sin. And the same is true for each and every one of us. And we can we can almost imagine Jesus in our minds. We can picture him in our minds holding up that, that secret ledger that Zacchaeus has uh, took uh, in which uh, Zacchaeus took, kept track of all the, the all the money that he that he skimmed off the top that he stole and saying to Zacchaeus what about this what are you going to do about this and that changed Zacchaeus that was like the turning point in his life not only did he pledge to repent from those sins giving to the poor paying back everything that he stole four times over. But in that turning point in in his life, in that conversion experience in his life, he was filled with joy. And that moment began as soon as he allowed Jesus not only into his home for dinner, but into his life, his heart, his mind, in his soul. He was filled with joy. Let's think about that word joy for a second. Joy. Just like that gospel reading and that short man, that's a short word, just three letters, J-O-Y. Zacchaeus knew that he had it. When he put the J first in his life, Jesus. When he put others second in his life, the O. And finally, when he put 
the why last, yourself. The same is true for each and every one of us. We can experience joy in our lives when we put J first, Jesus, others second, when we serve others, and when you put yourself last, joy. We've learned so much from that short gospel and that short man that I think that it challenges us to ask ourselves these questions. Have I ever blocked anyone from seeing Jesus? Have I ignored someone just screaming out, I want to see Christ because I'm lonely, I'm depressed, I'm sick, I'm suffering. I need Jesus. Do we ignore them? Or do we lift them up on our shoulders? Because we put them first. Have I ever used the obstacles in my life to prevent myself from seeing Christ? We call those excuses. I'm not smart enough. I'm not handsome enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm too short. Those are just excuses. I'm not worthy enough. I'm a sinner. Those are just excuses. Jesus wants to come into your into your life. <coughs> no matter what is going on, no matter what obstacles that, that you put in place that prevent them from get, getting into your life. You've got to remove those obstacles. Have I judged and ignored the sinner instead of hating the sin? Who have been the trees in your life that have helped you see Jesus better? A parent, a grandparent, a husband or a wife, a friend, a pew. Now is the time, now is the moment to, to thank God for those people that have lifted you up so that you can see Jesus. And finally, when Jesus invites himself over to your house for dinner, what do you say? Do you say, Lord, yes, welcome? Or do you say, oh, you know, I don't think I'm up for it tonight. I'm not ready. Can you get back to me some other time? Again, excuses. And when we find ourselves making excuses... For allowing Jesus to invite himself into your, not into your homes for dinner, but into your minds, hearts, and souls, then you need to pray. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We can learn a lot from a short gospel and from a short man. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, 
For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn to our loving God with all of our needs. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. That all who follow Christ, especially the leaders of the church, may be faithful in their witness to God's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That national assemblies and international bodies may cooperate to bring about a secure and lasting peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who provide for the poor and those who care for the sick may see their efforts alleviate suffering and hurt, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this assembly of the faithful, through word and example, may foster a spirit of holiness among all who worship here, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have gone before us, marked with a sign of faith, may enjoy an internal rest of light, happiness, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Nevada Snyder, from whom this Mass is offered, the prayers in our Book of Intentions, and for the needs which we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask you to hear all of our prayers and to answer us in the name of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. In number 602, 602.
through this water and wine, but we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share with us. Our We receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, and will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for heaven. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from all of my sins. Let us pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving you thanks and praise... He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Terry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may, be, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let us offer each other now a sign of Christ's peace. Peace with you. Peace with you. Thanks, everybody. You're doing a great job. Thanks, peace with you. This is Jesus. And he is inviting himself to come into your lives. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ.
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for for receiving what they promise through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of announcements before we go. Um, Our bulletin this weekend is full of stuff. Uh, So please take a bulletin home with you and read it. Uh, There's just a couple of things I want to highlight. Uh, First of all, uh, don't forget that this Tuesday is our annual Election Day Cabbage Roll Sale. Uh, Sales will begin on Tuesday morning at at 6 o'clock. As you all know, they're delicious, so go and buy two, three, buy a (laughs) hundred. Bring them to work with you. They're great. Also, um, we're starting an introduction to the Bible course on Tuesday evenings beginning on November 12th over, the, over at the Parish Center on the Gale Road. And there's more information about that. Uh, it's it's going to be an exciting uh, experience and opportunity, so I hope you take advantage of that. And also, don't forget that this Thursday is our monthly f- uh, first Thursday Holy Hour beginning at, at 6.30 right here at St. Mary's. So once again, please take home a bulletin and read it. The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with kindness and give you his peace. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass has ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Have a great week, everybody. The hymn number is 198. 198.